This is Miss Coconut. Let's talk about my favorite, my absolute favorite. I'm talking my favorite. The top six horror movies. It's the season of the witches. Let's get into it. Okay, first up is Night of the Living Dead. Okay, this movie terrified me. It actually came out the year that I was born. And it has ghouls. And you know what? I never knew this. But apparently the um, corpses were reanimating because... There was a space probe that um, came back to the Earth after picking up some kind of virus from the planet Venus. <laughs> I never knew that. But anyway, this has ghouls. This is cannibalism, necrophilia. I mean, you had to figure out how to kill these things that seemingly couldn't die. But on top of that, y'all, this is the first time we had a very strong black male lead in this type of movie and he was on fire he was saving everybody he was smart he was cool he was calm he was collected he know what to do i mean and this movie kept us on suspense because this was the first time we're actually seeing these kinds of monsters not like a voodoo zombie but these were zombies of a different kind okay so it was a very shocking movie for its time now to go back to the strong male lead this was also something that commonly wasn't done but they did take a chance on this actor because they felt um his presence his stage presence is what really did it but y'all can i tell you at the end of the movie they actually killed off the main character after he went through all the sweat blood and tears to save everybody they killed him off at the end and you know who killed him the vigilante group at the end he survives and the vigilante group mistakes him for a zombie and kill him now this was shot during racial times in black and white what a contrast there right uh art mimicking life and this is the ending that they give this strong black male lead character <sighs> this is a horror in many different ways y'all but still one of my favorites classic cult movie 1976 supernatural horror film the omen oh my god any movie about the devil is still scary to me i don't care what y'all say I don't care if y'all say there's no devil. Let me tell you, this movie, they say, was cursed, okay? And it had a lot of strange phenomena surrounding it. But basically, the premise of this story is this little boy that looks like a little angel, he is actually the Antichrist, okay? And it's lots of suspenseful moments in the music and the way they cut into the pictures and they just be killing people off. Now, even the priest can't do nothing the priest isn't even strong enough to war against this beast okay they had oh my god yeah i don't even want to give it away but i just want to encourage you to watch the original lots of strange things were occurring and um some people say that that because they exposed this concept that the antichrist would come through a politician's child that um, the devil wasn't too happy about it and that there were some strange things that occurred to some of the people as well okay so y'all I don't know if you're just into spooky horror that deals with the devil and how strong an evil force can be and how someone can look so innocent like a baby and just be the embodiment of the devil on this earth this is the movie for you okay i will never forget uh the horror at seeing that 666 etched in that little boy's head oh my goodness y'all you gotta watch the original all right guys so poltergeist is up next this movie was scary because we really started to engage in paranormal activity in the home but guess what, y'all? This movie is shrouded in mystery because several of its stars passed away. And not in a pleasant manner, y'all. Okay? And so they say this film was cursed. And, I mean, the little baby girl, Heather O'Rourke, oof, her story is very tragic. 
I don't even want to discuss it here, but you can look it up if you really want to know what went down. It's very creepy. But this movie gave us dimensions, portals, crazy animated clowns, um, psychics, um, paranormal phenomena. We were scared to go to sleep with the TV on. That's how scary this was, okay? So, um... I think this will still make you jump out your seat. Make sure you are watching the original one, okay, um, of these movies that I'm recommending because it's so much to pick up. And they didn't censor the movies back then like they censor them now. This was 1982. And believe it or not, some of this stuff was too gory to be shown or targeted towards children. But we were children watching this stuff, okay? I mean, well, I was a teenager at this point. But anyway, Poltergeist, 1982. Vampire movies are always on my list. I have to watch one, somebody's vampire story during the month of October. I have to. Now, whether it's Lestat, whether it's Blade, whether it's Dust to Dawn, I have to. Christopher Lee gives you like the 1960 creepy vibes. But uh, when you come up into the modern times with Bram Stoker's vampire, they give us a sexy love story and they show us exactly why, you know, women get easily swayed by seductive men that don't mean them no good. <laughs> but if you're into immortal life, uh, this is for you. And can you believe in the original book, this angle really wasn't explored at all. They did bring that sexy vampire feature into the movies and I think it was a big hit. We have the real life monster that horror and nightmares are made up of. Freddy Krueger, Nightmare on Elm Street. I was in high school when this came out and we went to the movies at night and trust me we stayed up all freaking night long until the morning because we were scared to death that we were going to die in our dream. That's how spooky this was. The concept, the idea that someone could come into your sleep. And this movie is based on a real life phenomenon that actually started to happen in the Asian culture uh, from some refugees from Cambodia. They were actually dying in their sleep. And when the author read that, he kind of loosely based his screenplay on that. But y'all, this was terrifying. Okay, first of all, he was killing kids a pedophile and then um he had that creepy claw right his face was burnt so the premise to this story is that he was a child killer and the townspeople wanted to get revenge against him so they basically became a vigilante mob and burned him alive and then um or burned him to death <laughs> well he was alive while he was burning and then he was dead but um, this is good because it deals with the subconscious factor and the dream state and what's real and what isn't real. Definitely watch the original. The last recommendation is the original Candyman. Tony Todd played a heck out of this role, honey. He had such a presence about him with his height. He was very imposing, very imposing of a figure, but also very romantic, right? So this story centers around the fact that he has come back um, through time to seek out um, his original love. And his story starts in slavery. You know, they always give us these good movies that always start with slavery, as if that's really where the story started. Anyway, so he was the son of a slave. They made money and he decided to pursue this master's daughter. And, of course, when they found that out, that wasn't allowed. So they burned him at stake, poured honey on him, cut his hands off. Because he was an artist, so he couldn't paint anymore. And um, he died. Now, the lady in the story is white. And this story is so racially charged, y'all. She's married. She's some kind of researcher, therapist or something. And she finds out about this urban myth about Candyman and decides to pursue it. But can I tell y'all, she's married. So the whole fact that she's pursuing this urban myth to the extent that it actually becomes reality just illustrates the point about 
bored and lonely and desperate housewives. She should have been cleaning up. That's what she should have been doing. But also, this movie is giving us the black man as the boogeyman. And that's what they like to do. They like to give us this strong, handsome, chocolate, just fine man in the lead role, honey. And then they decide to cut off his hands, right? And then they decide to make him this boogeyman. So you see how they do? That's what they do. But this story takes center place around the projects called Cabrini Green, which has its own real-life murder mystery going on. You should research that. Anyway, um, those are my top picks. I have a lot more I could have put on this list, but I would have been talking all day, y'all. And I don't have that kind of time. But tell me below, what's your favorite? What is your Halloween must-have movie? I want to know. Talk to y'all later. Happy Halloween.